in our industry, you know, there's a couple of dirty little secrets or like the dirty soft underbelly. One of them is that only 10% of all of the firms in our asset class actually generate real returns, 10%, which means 90% are basically floundering around burning money. The other thing is, is that we have always consistently generated a high single digit DPI, so like 1.7x is like the 30 year average on distributions. Yet we are the worst defender when it comes to showing people like you guys, paper markups or TVPI. Chamath Palihapitiya is a Silicon Valley venture capital investor who has made himself into a tech firebrand. He is a proponent of SPACs, a kind of investment vehicle that allows private companies to go public with less scrutiny from the SEC. Palihapitiya is a sponsor and investor in half a dozen SPACs. Companies they have merged with include Virgin Galactic and Clover Health. He is also the founder of Social Capital, a venture capital firm that he started in 2011. The firm faced a wave of defections in 2018. According to Chamath, many people believe that high interest rates are bad for the economy as they lead to a decrease in investment and growth. However, this is not always the case. In fact, technology businesses have historically been more successful during periods of high interest rates. The reason for this counterintuitive trend is that fewer investors are willing to invest in the riskier asset classes. He further explains why this is so in the video, as we would see. Unfortunately, many tech firms are currently stagnating as they rely on successive amounts of capital to fund their operations and ultimately prevent real returns for their stakeholders. In 2018, when Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell raised interest rates from zero, there was a drop in share prices, but this subsided once the perceived chance of recession receded. Since then, money has flooded into riskier assets such as technology stocks, cryptocurrencies, and SPACs driving prices up beyond sustainable levels and creating an environment ripe for a correction if not reset soon. In this video, Chamath will be giving a macro outlook on the current market conditions and his view on tech investments and will also be talking about industries he is bullish on and looking for investment opportunities. As we go into the video, please ensure you give us a like, subscribe, and drop your comments below. We're dealing with two things. One is just that if you really think about it, if, if I had said 13 months ago that we would be sitting here today and the Fed would have hiked you know, 500 basis points in nine months, plus or minus, you would have thought it was crazy. So we're sort of like coming into this phase of sobriety trying to figure out how do we all do our jobs differently and what does it mean for the investments that we've already put in the ground? And for me personally, I think it really, the setup is that it amplifies tail risk. And so right now, I'm sort of somewhat quite cautious because I think there's a left tail risk, and I think Mike Wilson is here, but you know, if you listen to Mike, who's been really right so far, you know, the risk is that the S&P earnings are sort of with a one handle, 180, 185, and all of a sudden the S&P is you know, 3,200, 3,300. But then there's this right tail risk, which is that the Fed becomes dovish Everybody capitulates because it looks like things are slowing down. And now all of a sudden, though, you will have to deal with terminal rates that are going to be 4 to 5% on a more consistent basis because if he lets off the gas now, then inflation kind of sticks around. Yeah. So both roads lead to repriced assets just in very different path dependency. And those risks to me are a little um, heightened. And so I've tried to kind of be quite conservative and just you know, be down the fairway. There's a lot to learn when you look at the past, which is that a high rate environment, at least in the area in which I operate, which is you know, um, technology businesses, we've actually counterintuitively built better businesses during periods of high rates. Yeah. And the reason is because there are fewer allocators that come to our part of the market because you can find better risk-free rates, as you said, the two year, you know, even down to T-bills and repo, quite honestly. Um, so that's one thing. And then the second thing is that in the absence of this surfeit of capital, it forces each individual company to frankly just be better managed because there's less money. And so we become as an ecosystem more intolerant of excess. And all of that just creates better run businesses. And so we haven't had that cycle for probably 14 or 15 years. Um, and so we desperately need it because if you look inside of a lot of technology companies, they're unfortunately rotting from the inside out, right? They've had a period where 
they've been able to raise successive amounts of capital to fund a valuation creep that frankly won't translate into what the actual money is you're gonna get back. Um, in our industry, you know, there's a couple of dirty little secrets or like the dirty soft underbelly. One of them is that only 10% of all of the firms in our asset class actually generate real returns, 10%, which means 90% are basically floundering around burning money. The other thing is, is that we have always consistently generated a high single digit DPI, so like 1.7x is like the 30 year average on distributions. Yet we are the worst offender when it comes to showing people, like you guys, paper markups or TVPI. So there is this dance that, that this industry has been able to play because rates have been at zero. So as investors, the asset class, I think, is very challenged in order to generate real returns now. The companies that we funded have, as a result of all this excess capital, been more poorly run than otherwise. And so we need to course correct. So we need these rates to be sustained for you know, five, six, seven years, frankly, hopefully, in order to really flush it through the system. As interest rates continue to rise, it becomes more and more difficult for startups and early stage companies to access capital. This is especially true in today's economy where valuations are high but profits are not yet established. As a result, many great opportunities will go untapped as startup teams that would be perfect for this period are passed over in favor of those with higher valuations but no profits. Chamath further commented that the energy industry is undergoing a major shift with potential consequences for millions of Americans. This shift is being driven by advances in technology, specifically the application of artificial intelligence, AI, and machine learning. Together, these technologies have the potential to break away from monopolistic behavior and regulatory capture, two long-standing problems in the energy sector. He gives a more detailed description of growth investments and the role of the new major shift in energy and computing power in the current economy. Let us now listen to what he has to say. Yeah, I think the problem with growth investing, just to give you some anecdotal data, like at the end of last year, I looked at six, seven converts. And these were all extremely well-known companies that all of you would know on a first name basis. And they all came to me trying to raise convert. And I said, well, here's the real market clearing price of these companies, and none of them took my money. And instead they did a convert to basically deflect and kick the can down the road on valuation. So we're at that point in the market where all the boards of these private companies refuse to budge on valuation. And the reason is because it impacts meaningfully their DPI or their TVPIs that they've given to LPs. It's a very difficult part of the private markets right now to invest in because you will not be allowed to do true price discovery because nobody wants to take the real hits. The best companies will do it. I mean, I think you saw today that Stripe may take a 50% down round. That's probably the best technology company in Silicon Valley proper being built right now. So they'll do it. Klarna did it. In fact, it's so interesting that it's all, you know, the through line there is Sequoia, which is an extremely disciplined and incredible organization. So they're able to enforce that discipline. But other companies, other venture funds, they don't want to look at the TVPI decay. And so it's uninvestable, quite honestly. On the other end, early stage venture has always been where the real gross dollar profits are made. And if you overlay that with a rising rate environment and you regress that back 30 or 40 years, in fact, we did it looking back 60 years, the most incredible opportunities to make money are actually when rates are rising in early stage venture. That's just the historical artifact if you look at public companies in size. So you know, we said very explicitly, okay, no more growth. The default answer right now is gonna be no, we're not gonna to touch it, but we're gonna to continue to sort of over-index into early stage and do as many good deals as we can see and you know, let the chips fall where they may. You know, right now, today, you can generate, using solar and wind, energy that's effectively approaching zero. Mm -hmm. And it's cheaper than that gas. And not, it's not just at the residential level, but it's also at the baseload power generation level. And so as a totality, you have the ability for 100 million US homeowners to effectively displace 1,700 utilities and all of that monopolistic behavior and regulatory capture. And so if all of a sudden you have free abundant energy that you can collect from the sky and store in your garage and direct anywhere you want, 
you all of a sudden have the ability to solve problems via brute force that before you couldn't because they were boundaries of energy. Separately, we have found a way to transition away Moore's law away from CPUs into these application-specific chipsets now that operate in a realm of machine learning and AI. And the cost of that is effectively going to zero because these reference designs now are so well understood. The software is so powerful now. And when you multiply these two things together, if you wanted to brute force, reverse engineer every single theoretical protein that binds to every other protein in your body, what was a multi-billion dollar compute and energy problem is now effectively a few tens of millions of dollars. If you actually wanted an infrastructure that could actually detect in real time how to give true autonomous self-driving, make extremely complicated decisions, and stop on a dime, those were compute problems that you can now basically make render costless. And so when those two things come together, it's one of these really transformational moments in our society where you can go after some very big problems that we didn't think were tractable before. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very excited about that intersection and finding companies that play on those themes. It has been a tumultuous time for the markets lately with tremendous volatility and widespread panic. For investors and entrepreneurs, it is a time of sober reflection. Amplifying tail risk is paramount and caution should be exercised when making investments. However, there are still opportunities to make gains in the market if you're willing to take some risks. Chamath advises that the barbell approach with conservative yet volatile investments on either end of the spectrum can be a savvy way to invest capital right now. By combining stable investments like government bonds with more risky but potentially rewarding investments like stocks, you're able to mitigate some of the risks associated with market volatility. Additionally, by keeping your portfolio balanced across these different types of assets, you're able to avoid overexposure or underinvestment in any one area. What do you think of Chamath's outlook and financial investment advice? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Also, do not forget to give us a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for future videos. Thanks for watching.